Hello Divination and welcome. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you step by step how to reveal images using horizontal hover grids and hidden overflow with Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so let's start by creating a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to pages, click on add new, and we're going to give a page a name. So we're just going to call this reveal images and we're going to go straight to the visual builder. So I'm going to click here on use Divi builder. Now for this design, we're going to build everything from scratch. So I'm going to go ahead and select this and we're going to have a single column. Now, before we add any modules, let's start by adding a gradient background to our rows. So I'm going to click here on my row settings background and I'm going to start with my first color. Now, if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout, throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the video description below. And also, if you don't want to go through the step-by-step -step process of building this, there's also a way to download this layout. So you can just go to the post and add your email address and download the post. All right, so I'm going to come over here and add my first color. So I'm going to paste my color in here, add my second color, and my second color here is going to be white. Right, so the next thing we need to do is to change our gradient type from linear to radial, and we need to make sure that everything here is centered, and then we need to add our start and end position, which is going to be 28% and 28% for the end position. So for the next step now, we need to add the hover gradient. So I'm going to come over here and click this arrow that's pointing up. Click on the hover tab and let's start by adding our first color. So I'm going to paste my color in here and my second color here is going to be white and my start and end position. Now we're going to change this from 28% to 5% and 5% over here as well. All right, the next stage is to come over here to the design tab and then you're gonna go to spacing. Now here on the spacing, we are going to add a padding of zero to the top and the bottom. And we're also going to add a margin of 50 pixels again, both to the top and the bottom. So to quickly do that, I'll just activate this change. So the same value has been added now to the top and the bottom. Next, we're going to add a border. So I'm going to come over here to border. And the border we're going to add is going to be on the top right and bottom right. So I'm going to disable this chain and add my values here. And this is going to be 50 pixels and 50 pixels to the bottom right. Next, we're going to add a hover, a hover action on on our rounded corners. So I'm gonna click on this arrow and we're just gonna bring this back to zero. And this action is gonna happen on the hover tab. Okay, so you can see what's happening there. Now let's move on to our next step. And this time we're going to be adding a box shadow. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down here to box shadows. And the box shadow style we're going to choose is this first one here. And now let's add all our settings. So the first thing we need to do is to add our blur strength and we're going to set this to 50 pixels. And then finally, I'm going to come over here to the color by clicking here on this eyedropper tool and just pasting my values between the brackets. And as I mentioned before, if you want to use the exact same values as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. So the next thing I want to do now is to remove the um, box shadow on hover. So I'm going to come over here and click this arrow, click on the hover tab. And I'm just going to make sure I click here on this eyedropper tool. And I'm just going to add full transparency here just to remove the color on hover. So now that we've added all these settings, the next stage is to add our module. So I'm going to click here on this plus button. And the module we need to add is a text module. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. And in here, we're going to add text which says recent shots. Right now, this needs to be a heading. So I'm just going to highlight and click on this drop, uh, this drop here and select heading two. Now we need to stylize this heading by coming over here to design heading text. Make sure you select heading two. So let's start with our font here. So the font we're going to go with is called Acme. And here it is. I'm going to select it. I want to make sure this is underlined. And I'm also going to choose my underlying color by clicking on this eyedropper tool and pasting it in here. Now let's add our heading text color. So this is going to be a solid black. So I'm going to click here on this eyedropper tool and just drag this all the way down to black. And now we need to add our text size, which is going to be 3VW. The next stage is to add some spacing. So I'm going to come over here and add a padding of 7VW to the bottom and 6VW to the top. And then the left padding is going to be 2VW and then save. Next, we're going to add an image module by clicking here on this plus button and I'm going to search for it and select it. 
click here on the anywhere on this area, choose my image. Now notice my image that I'm using is 800 by 510 pixels. So you can use pretty much any image you want, but for this example, this is the value that I'm using. So I'm gonna click here on upload an image. Next, we're gonna come over here to the link and we're going to make sure that this opens in a light box. I'm gonna choose yes to that. Now let's head over here to our design tab and choose sizing. So first of all, we're going to force this full width and then save. And then next we're going to clone this image module twice by clicking here on this button. So you can see now I've cloned it twice. So all I have to do now is to go in and change these images. So I'm gonna start by coming over here to the second one and I'm gonna choose this image right here. Click upload an image. I wanna save this, move on to the next one. Click on the gear icon and change this as well and save. Now the next stage is to add some hover effects to this row. So I'm gonna click here on my row settings, design, and then I'm gonna to go to sizing. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is to add my gutter width. So first of all, I have to activate it and set this to one. Now the gutter width is pretty much the space between the columns. So I've just reduced that to one, which means there won't be any spaces. Now the next stage is to head over here to the width and set this to 20%. And then for the maximum width, I'm gonna set this to 100%. And the height, we're gonna set it to 15.9 VW. Now over here on the width, we are going to add our hover effect. So I'm gonna click here on this arrow, click on hover, and we're gonna bring this back to 100%. Next, I'm gonna come over here to the advanced tab, visibility. So here is where we need to add our horizontal overflow and vertical overflow. So I'm gonna start with uh, horizontal overflow and set this to hidden. And I'm gonna do the same for the vertical overflow. And for the transitions here, I'm gonna set this to zero. Now to create a grid on hover, we're going to open the column settings and go to the advanced tab and add some CSS code for the hover element. So let's save this. In fact, we need to come over here to content and then click on column one, advanced, and then we're gonna to go to the main element. So I'm gonna click here on custom CSS. But here on the main element, I am going to choose and we'll add this code on hover. So I'm gonna click here on this arrow, click on the hover tab and paste my CSS code. And by the way, this CSS code can be found on the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. So pretty much that's all we need to do. I'm gonna save this for now, save it one more time. So the next step, uh, the next stage now is to clone this twice. But what we're cloning here is the actual row, not the, not the uh, section. So I'm gonna come over here and clone this twice. All right, so the next step now is to go to the second duplicate by clicking here on row settings. So what we're going to do here is come over to the background and change the first color in our gradient. So this is just so that we differentiate our colors. So I'm gonna add my color in here. And then we also need to do the same to the last one here. So just go into the row settings. Now, as you can see here, because we have hover effects, sometimes it may be difficult to go in. So what I normally do is I would come over here to expand settings, click on wireframe view. And then on the last one here, this is where you wanna go into your settings. So as you can see, this is much more stable because it doesn't have the hover effects there and then. So next, what you need to do now is to just click here on desktop view, and this will give you the view of the desktop. So now all we have to do is to add our background color here, paste it. Now you can also go ahead and add the underlying color as well. So again, I'm just gonna come to my wireframe mode and on the text here is where you'd change the underlying color by coming over here to design, adding text, underline, and then you can add your underlying color in here. So I'm just gonna paste it in here. So you wanna go ahead and add the rest of the colors. In the meantime, I'm just gonna switch back over here to my desktop mode. And now let's do a quick preview and see if this design is working okay. So I'm gonna click here on publish, and then I'm gonna exit the visual builder. And now we can test our design. So you can see here when I hover over it, it reveals all this information here. And this applies also to the second one and also to the last one. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.